Welcome back to Nerd Mythology. Thank you for joining us one more time. We really appreciate you guys coming back and watching us. And uh, obviously, you don't think we're we're crazy or anything because you're still here, still you're still here. watching, still <laughs> listening. So please don't leave. Please don't <laughs> leave us. We really appreciate you listening. Thanks a lot. But anyway, today's episode. I am pumped for today's episode. Mm. I told you to do your research. I did my research. Mm -hmm. We looked up some some stuff. We went in deep. I think you went a lot deeper than I did. Um, I went into a <laughs> rabbit hole. I fell through a rabbit hole. As you guys can see here, I got papers. Eight. Eight of them. Full. And uh, like I was telling you originally, I was like, man, I I started looking up, looking up this character and I just fell into a rabbit hole. Like I deviated hard right off, the, <laughs> off of the story. And I was like, good God, what, where am I? I think I followed <clears throat> one particular story for the character we're going to talk about. Um, so for those of you that are still wondering who we're talking about, it's going to be Mr. Hal Jordan. Green our Lantern. Famous Green Lantern himself, right? Mm -hmm. So... Let's dive right in, shall we? Let's do it. Let's do it. You know, what you got for me, man? So Hal Jordan, right? He was a former military test pilot. He is the protector of Sector 2814, Which right? Earth falls in that Exactly. That yeah, the Earth falls into that sector, so he is basically the main protector of... So if I'm not mistaken, each Green Lantern has a sector of space that they all protect. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so they all protect like a certain sector, right? So, but the one that we're focusing on is 2814, right? That's the one that we kind of fall into. Okay. And uh, also, you know, like a founding member of the Justice League, right? So as we know, um, you know, like if you guys uh, haven't heard this before or haven't heard it in a while, you know, like if you remember the Green Lantern's oath. It's got to be one of the most gangster oaths I've ever heard. Absolutely. So it goes in brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power. Green Lantern's light. God. <laughs> oh. Yeah, like I remember listening to that to that oath originally like in the cartoons and even hell even in the ryan reynolds hey, movie i know ryan I reynolds like, doesn't like it but <laughs> i'm telling you when i watched it there's a lot and i do mean a lot of flaws <clears throat> with uh the movie green lantern oh, absolutely yeah but when he was sitting there speaking the oath and he i don't know if it oh, was yeah. just the 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 way he he portrayed it in his voice i was like Damn. Nice. Damn. Very yeah. nice. Good job, Reynolds. Good job. Good for you, buddy. He said it with such authority. I was I like, know, oh, right? that's what I'm talking about. That was actually like one of my favorite parts of the movie, right? Like I was just waiting for him to like just say it. Hurry up and say it, man. Say it. Hurry up and say it, man. God. Um, I know, yeah, like like you said, a lot of people hated that movie and it has its flaws. Even himself, yeah. even he himself has said it. Like he it dumps on it all the time. Every chance he gets. Yeah. It wasn't like the it wasn't the fan favorite, right? I don't think he got enough. Um, he got his own. Like he obviously had a, a direction he wanted to take it, and I don't think they gave him enough direction himself. Yeah, or they, they didn't give him enough leeway to where he could have took it where he wanted to. Yeah, and I think that was his issue. Obviously, you've heard him talk about the suit. He yeah, did not want it CGI. Oh, Made yeah. it CGI. Uh, obviously, you see how good it looks when it, it's not CGI. Oh, yep. Deadpool. Absolutely. But, yep. Yeah. But as far as as far as that goes, you know, like it, you know, for some of us, I actually did enjoy the movie. Like I enjoyed it like for what it was, right? Like Green Lantern movie. Yeah. I, growing up, Green Lantern was actually one of my favorite characters growing up. Was it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I just enjoyed. Is it as far as like throughout Marvel and DC or just DC? Just DC itself. Yeah. yeah like DC, like, you know, as I, when I was a kid growing up, you know, like I would watch the justice league, you know, and all oh, yeah. that kind of stuff. Green Lantern was one of my favorite characters. Actually, obviously Superman is top dog, honestly, but Super other than Superman, Green Superman Lantern was, was never my favorite. <clears throat> no, nowhere close. Flash was my favorite. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Besides my number one favorite um, Marvel, or sorry, my f number one favorite like comic book character is always going to be the Hulk. Yeah. I related a lot with that character as far as, um, you know, just the difficulty problems. Yeah. But I loved, absolutely love the Flash. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, diving in, uh, 
please don't massacre me here. Uh, I had to get a lot of notes for this, so I hope you guys enjoy this episode. So we'll just dive right in. Um, so becoming a Green Lantern, right? Uh, Hal had been kicked out of the military, right? Yep. So he got kicked out for assaulting a, an officer, one of his peers, and uh, he was a a fighter jet pilot, correct? If I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> and he was reduced to an engineer, and he was... Uh, Eventually abducted by the alien, right? Abin Sur is his name. And Sur wanted Hal to replace him in the Green Lantern's corpse, uh, an intergalactic police force that has safeguarded the universe for billions of years. And Hal accepted the offer, and he went to basic training in uh, planet Oa. And uh, from there, he completed basic training, and he was assigned to the Thal... Thal? Sinestro of Korogar, right? Okay. So you remember Sinestro himself, right? He yeah. was uh he, he's a huge part of uh the Green Lantern story cuz he I if I remember correctly, doesn't Sinestro turn bad? He, yeah, he, he turns up, evil correct. He's exactly. A, he's part of the uh the Green Lantern Corps, Absolutely. but he eventually indulges in a different um I, what is it the yellow core so yeah like, he was and, the yellow and, yeah yeah Green and Lanterns. yellow is uh for those of you that don't know i believe it is fear yeah so um green is no fear it uses your willpower absolutely the yellow core feeds on fear the mm -hmm. it, you know it um and that's where you get certain characters like uh parallax parallax yep yeah. parallax was one of the big uh characters uh so Parallax himself, so I got him here in one of my notes. He was actually, think of him as a god, basically, right? Yeah. Kind of like a god. And he was um, like the living embodiment of fear. Like the, the, give me one second here. Parallax is a physical embodiment of fear, an entity given power by the emotional electromagnetic spectrum. So... When I looked it up, I was like, okay, so he's he's basically a god. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but moving forward, right, he, uh, Green Lantern eventually ended up on War World, uh, where Sinestro Corps was recognized as the Guardians of the Universe. He was captured by, escaped the with the help of Sinestro's daughter. Then he then sacrificed his life to make world war, war world glow green one last time and defeated the parallax wielding sinestro so mm. at one mm. point sinestro did have like the power of parallax if i'm not mistaken isn't hal jordan the, sh the was he the first human green lantern so the first green lantern uh is gonna be but is he the first human Green Lantern? No. So Alan Scott was the first Green okay. Lantern, actually. Okay. So Alan Scott is the original superhero known as the Green Lantern. He was basically like the comic book adaptation of Green Lantern. And we've had many Green Lanterns since uh, Alan Scott. So that was the first one. Second one was actually Hal Jordan, right? So he took over uh, for Alan Scott afterwards. Okay. But the story that we know, right? Abensor, he took over for Abensor, his place for Abensor, but he wasn't the first human Green Lantern. Okay. After that, it was Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner is the third Green Lantern of Earth and a member of the Green Lantern Corps assigned to Earth known for his brash attitude and machismo. <laughs> the guy <laughs> was full of himself. <laughs> but yeah, he had also been a member of the Justice League International and the Red Lantern Corps also. Okay. Um, after that, it was John Stewart. If you know, we, uh, a lot of people actually know John Stewart. He was one of the most popular, uh, John Stewart would be, if I can remember now, this is me. There's a lot of characters going through my head right now. Isn't John Stewart, uh, our black green lantern. Yeah. The black green. Yeah. Lantern. Well, okay. Black in in color, right? Uh, skin color. Yeah. Yeah. So he was, uh, the fourth green lantern of earth. Formerly a sniper for the U.S. Marines and an architect and, and also. A gangster. A gangster. <laughs> <laughs> and then the fifth one, you know, that's where I kind of like stopped. There were, there is more. The fifth one is Kyle Rayner. He's the fifth Green Lantern of Earth, a powerful member of the Green Lantern Corps, serving as an honor guard 
and is considered the greatest Green Lantern, supposedly. So who who's considered the greatest? Uh, Kyle Rayner. So there's so Kyle Rayner is he the the latest? No, he's. I don't think he's the latest. There is more Green Lanterns out there. So is he considered the greatest as far as his um, he he's his willpower, or is it because he's the strongest? Because from my understanding, the story, Hal Jordan, yeah, Hal Jordan it was the strongest Green Lantern by. Far. Yeah, by like, far, Hal Jordan is the one that, yeah, like, we know as to be, like, the strongest Green Lantern, the the, the most so powerful where, one. So where my rabbit hole took me was Death of Superman. Okay. Do you remember what happened after the Death of Superman? So Death of Superman, I think a lot of the uh, Justice League members just kind of, like, uh, went away, did their own thing, and... Semi. So they had to... They found a replacement for Superman. There had to have been a replacement. There, the world cannot live without Superman. Right. Uh, DC has founded their whole... Their, their foundation is on Superman. Yes, His back absolutely. Is DC. So they the, the universe needs him. So yeah. they... There was uh, the League of Superman. Yeah. Including, uh, I hope I get this right, uh, Cyborg Superman. Okay, yep. Um, there, no there's a play. story where, oh, I can't remember what city Hal Jordan originates from, but it is destroyed. Okay. And if I can remember correctly, I think it was by Cyborg Superman. Oh, man. Hal Jordan loses it. He, he tries to re... Um, Reimage it using the power of the ring. Of the ring, yeah. The ring is not strong enough to do it. So Hal Jordan goes to the uh, the core, the planet, to yeah. get more power. The core doesn't. The the Green Lantern core does not want him to do that. So yeah. they all face off against him. Hal Jordan doesn't just beat every other lantern out there. He kills all the other lanterns, all of them. Good. God. Including Sinestro, if I can remember correctly, he 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 wipes them. I think yeah. there's only two Green Lanterns left that okay. he, he pretty much spared. Yeah, he killed them all. Oh man, this dude went ham, <laughs> and, <laughs> and he became so powerful. He took all the power of the core. Like if, if for yeah, anyone, the who, Green Lantern, yeah, core, the yeah. Green Lantern core. So like there are giant lanterns there where the the whole core itself takes their power from you can go there and pretty much recharge your your ring absolutely from it. yeah he took it all the entire core itself yeah. the whole power making him basically a god yeah at this point cyborg superman is on the run he's high mm -hmm. he's just taking off yeah and he gets to a point where um there's a uh, an entity a dark entity to heading towards earth yeah and it's absorbing the sun it is so when it takes over the sun yeah what is superman so superman at this yeah, point yeah that's his weakness right yeah, there yeah at this point superman no has came back yeah. superman is now back he he's re uh, resurrected you know the if you follow not to get off track on how superman came back but superman eventually comes back yeah absolutely and if you know anything about Superman, he gets his power from our sun. Yeah. That's why he's so strong because our sun is so much newer than his from, Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. from his planet. So with that going away, Superman has no power to fight. Right. So it's the rest of the world that has band together and they are trying to destroy. I forgot the name of this entity that's taking the sun. Can't do it. The sun is engulfed and it, it's mere days after the, the world is just pretty much given up. They're like, they're saying their goodbyes. Oh, yep. Excuse me. Um, Superman goes to his family and the, on the farm, his mother, and it's pretty much, you know, it's this is it. This is the end. Yeah. So to jump back to Hal Jordan, Hal Jordan has now tracked down Cyborg Superman. Right. To the end of the galaxy, to the known universe. Jesus. At the end of the known universe, do you know what's there? It's a wall of fallen gods. Okay. And it's pretty much saying, do not go beyond this beyond this uh this point this is the end every everyone who's who's gained certain god level powers yeah has gone that far trying to make it past saying there's more there's more power to obtain yeah on this point there's a being a life force saying this is as far as you go this is it so there's a wall of all the gods that are turned to stone saying as a warning to anyone else who wants to go past this point. Yeah. Cyborg Superman makes it there saying there's got to be more. Guess who catches up to him? Who? Hal Jordan. Hal Jordan he says there's nowhere to run from here. Oh, as they face off one last time, Hal Jordan, a 
obliterates Cyborg Superman. God. Doing what everyone has. Uh, you have a wall of, of uh, celestial beings just right. in giant stone. Yeah. Saying, even if you touch this wall, you will become part of it. Yeah. As a warning sign to everyone else to come. Hell yeah. How Jordan touches it. He goes, there's got to be more. There's this can't be it. Yeah. At that point, I think someone comes to him begging him for help. At that point, Hal Jordan then returns back to uh, Earth. Yeah. And pretty much tells him, stand by, I got this. And destroys <laughs> the dark entity, relieving the sun. The yeah. sun is now back. The world's safe. Uh, Superman gains his powers back. But everyone at this point, I think Batman's like, we're not going to forgive you, Hal Jordan, for what you did. Yeah. Because uh, he pretty much tried to rebuild. He, he killed a lot of people. Oh, yeah. And trying to make the world. He, he said he was just trying to make it back to what he knew. The yep. world he loved. The cities he loved. The people. Return them all back. Yep. But Batman. Being Batman. Yeah. He's like, we can't forgive you in the way you did it. Yeah. Superman's like, in my eyes, he's a hero. Yeah. But Batman wasn't accepting it. So they all, and Hal Jordan goes, I'm not looking for forgiveness. I'm just trying to right my wrongs. <laughs> yeah. And at that point, went on his way. <clears throat> Man. Gangster. Gangster. Oh, God. That's, that's where my Hal Jordan took me. That's where my rabbit hole. That that rabbit hole. That's that's a good one. That that's really nice. Um Yeah, the one the rabbit hole I went down, oh man, it went really, really off off the rails. Mm. Completely off the rails. I forgot but, to tell you, sorry, not to cut you off. Parallax. He engulfed Parallax. Yeah. That's how he became so strong as well. Oh shit. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut that nah, out. <laughs> you should be able to hear that by now. <laughs> All right. But um, speaking of, you know, powers and abilities for uh, Hal Jordan, uh, his willpower, form, uh, transformation, right? Hal's connection to the green light, will, of, green light of will is so great that he can transform into a construct, allowing him to channel greater amounts of power at the risk of dissipating into energy himself. So he can use so much of it that his body himself is gone. Himself, yeah, Man. absolutely. Um, he also, you know, like military uh, background, right? So he has, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat himself. He's well-trained. Um, absolutely well-trained. Indomitable, indomitable will. So this one was kind of we weird. It's like the way they wrote it. Yeah. And I was like, what? But it's just basically willpower. Like his willpower is so great that he can you know, create anything that he wants, you know, with the ring. Yeah. Um, there's no limits to him. There's no limits to him, you know. And then he also has like telepathic resistance. Um, he's able to resist uh, Hector Hammond's telepathy and uh, great leadership, hand to hand combat. Like I said, uh, he's great with engineering stuff. And did you know that also one of his weaknesses damn near did, his only weakness is the speed force. My man, the flash. <laughs> <laughs> so it's crazy. Yeah. Like, uh, I really didn't find much on it. And I was okay. like, what are you serious? Like the speed force. So is it just that it's so fast? He, he just can't it deal just, with it. Yeah. Like it says that the speed force energy, like the energy from the speed force itself disrupts the uh, energy from the ring, like the ring functions. That's freaking awesome. Yeah. So I was like, <gasps> Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. But, uh, you know, obviously we know that, uh, once he puts on that ring and he becomes a green lantern, obviously there comes a sense of, uh, enhanced strength also, you know, that just comes with it. But it was, it was really cool to see that, like the speed force out of all things, the speed force. I was like, yeah, that's crazy. Um, but moving on, right. Uh, I, let me save this for. For a minute, right? We're right. not ready for this. You, you got a treat for me waiting at the end. All right. Yeah, so <laughs> just don't wait. Don't bear, worry. Bear it'll, with us. It'll, it'll all be worth it, right? But obviously, uh, speaking of gods, right? So you mentioned that Hal Jordan was basically a god with all the power that oh, he had, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Do you know who the Spectre is? Oh, on top of my head, I cannot remember. I know I've heard that name. The Spectre is a com cosmic entity and the physical embodiment of God's vengeance on earth permanently mm. bonded to a human soul. He uses his incredible divine powers to punish the truly wicked, usually ending his victims lives in creative and ironic ways. <laughs> his existence is in response to the failure of Eclipso 
the spirit of God's wrath that turned completely malevolent and evil. Jim Corrigan is the person that actually embodies the Spectre, right? The Spectre is uh, Jim Corrigan. He was the original superhero and acted as a member of the Justice Society of America during the Golden Age. Hal Jordan, a fallen Green Lantern, took his place during the Day of Judgment as a way of seeking redemption. After Jordan's rebirth, Crispus Allen became the third Spectre at the end of the Day of Vengeance during the Infinite Crisis. The Spectre was created by Jerry Siegel and Bernard Bailey, first appearing in More Fun Comics number 52 in 1940. Joff Jones, Joff Jones is established how Jordan as a new specter in day of judgment number five in 1999. Okay. So if I understood that correctly, how Jordan pretty much became the God of, uh, vengeance. Yeah. The God, a, a literal God. Damn. I mean, come on. Is there anything how Jordan can't do? <laughs> how Jordan, man, I'm telling you, this is where my rabbit hole took me, right? Yeah. So just a little bit of a uh, backstory with uh, Jim Corrigan. He's the original human host of the Spectre. Uh, murdered in life as a police detective, his soul was bonded to God's spirit of divine vengeance. Using his conscience and willpower, he controls the Spectre force and gives it human perspective. Hal Jordan took over as his successor during Day of Judgment, allowing Corrigan to move on. He was a member of the All-Star Squadron and the Justice Society of America. So, yeah, Hal Jordan was a badass. I think it's safe to say, at this point, Hal Jordan, like, you know, like, obviously, when you told me, hey, I want to dive into Hal Jordan, I looked more into this, and I, I now have a new character that I am deeply attached to, and he... he immediately jumped up the ranks of one of my favorite i'm telling you i was not kidding when i said he was one of my favorites when i was growing i up, just man. didn't expect it to be that like Dude, he's a badass but you know how jordan is considered like you know uh back to you know who was the greatest green lantern yeah how jordan is considered the greatest green lantern an intergalactic law enforcement a member of the green lantern corps chosen by the guardians of the universe for his ability to overcome great fear the strength of his willpower allows him to wield the universe's mightiest weapon a power ring controlled by his thoughts right in his secret identity he is a test pilot working for ferris aircraft where he's his boss carol ferris which becomes his love interest mm. uh, later on is also his, you know, his romantic interest having turned into his e having turned into the evil parallax during Emerald Twilight and died during the final light. His soul became a host of the specter during Day of Judgment until his resurrection during Green Lantern. So he pretty much became the specter after his love turned into uh, parallax. Parallax. Yeah. Damn. Crazy. Damn. Crazy. I'm telling you, man. So he is the most well-known Green Lantern also. Uh, Alan Scott of the Golden Age is the original version, like we were talking about it earlier, yeah. of the character. Other Lanterns have acted as his partners, successors, or replacement at times have included Guy Gardner, John Stewart, and Kyle Rayner. He is a founding member of the Justice League of America, and, you know, we already uh, established that, basically. Yeah. But... So here is where everything took a turn, right? Like it, it was crazy, right? Let me hear it. So <laughs> let's uh, let's go back a little bit. Let me uh, get your notes together. Let me get my get notes right. together here, real quick. Hold on, give me, give me two, give me, give me a couple seconds. Because I'm, I'm right? expecting a hell of a banger. I'm telling you, dude, I was. So this is where it went hard, right? Oh yeah, hard right. So I left the uh, the DC universe. You know the Living Tribunal, right? The, the he is uh, the DC's version of like the is it the one above all? So he is Marvel's version. Oh, Marvel's version. Basically, the Spectre, how we just uh, talked about. Okay, it, right? yeah, yeah. So he was a per the personification of the multiversal law as a representative for the one above all the living tribunal had the highest authority in the multiverse the living tribunal was slain when the beyonders 
beings from outside the multiverse attacked following this. The one above all replaced him with a new living tribunal, right? Okay. So we know the living tribunal. So you might be wondering, like, what the what does the living tribunal have to do with anything here? What does a right? Marvel what, character what do Marvel with a DC character, character, character? Right? Like, what's 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 going on here? Yeah. Did you know that the living tribunal actually teamed up? Shut with up, the Spectre. Shut up of the DC universe what? to create a new universe, a third universe, a new universe. Or yeah, okay, so. You have the Living Tribunal, and I'm assuming when he when he teamed up with the Spectre, which I'm going to assume was Hal Jordan at the time. Oh yeah, created another universe. Another universe. Damn that universe. <laughs> some of you might know this. Some of you might not. It's called the Amalgam Universe. I have not heard of. of You've the, never heard of the I, Amalgam I Universe, man. I'm telling you, when I say I love the internet, the internet is a scary place. Let me let me first say <laughs> that, right? It's a scary place, but there are deep, dark corners of the internet where you can find a sort of comfort, and this was it. <laughs> this me, was it. Put me in my comfort zone. Let me hear it. Let me <laughs> <Nice>. hear it. <laughs> so, the Amalgam Universe. I'm, I'm, let me see if I'm saying this right. Amalgam? Amalgam. Amalgam. Amalgam Universe, okay. right? Okay. So, Amalgam... The word itself means a merge, right? So kind of like take one character of one universe and take another character of another universe, mash them together. Gotcha. Yeah. So the Amalgam Universe was a metafictional American comic book publisher and part of a collaboration between Marvel Comics and DC Comics in which the two comic book publishers merged their characters to create new ones. Um. These characters first appeared in a series of 12 comic books, which were published in 1996 following the Marvel vs. DC miniseries, a second set. So the, uh, the two comic book universes came together when the incarnations of their respective universes referred to as the brothers. So when we say the brothers, we are talking about DC itself and marvel themselves right okay so this uh, these are in this universe cosmic entities themselves okay right so the brothers became aware of each other after eons of slumber to prevent the brothers from destroying each other characters from each universe battled to determine which universe would survive several of the matches were determined by online voting and axel asher I'll get to who Axel Asher is. <laughs> I got a feeling we're going to have to need a part two here. Oh, yeah. We're definitely going to need a part two. Um, but real quick, a character created for the event uh, served as a gatekeeper who became struck traveling between both universes. But if you want to hear more of this. Listen to the second episode listen. of uh, the next po uh, episode of uh, Nerd Mythology. I think this is what we're on Nerds. 13 i don't know yeah something like 12 that 13 Some, something crazy like so, that. so yeah listen to the next episode because we're about to run out of time here guys uh i am this will be part one we'll call the next one part two so yeah. that way you know which one to look for but yeah hey if uh if you're enjoying this and you're liking this give us a like thumbs up all the all the stuff <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm invested Oh, you, yeah. got, you got me hooked. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, guys, we're going to end today's podcast uh, just due to time. Uh, we appreciate you guys for listening. If you guys are watching, uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll catch you guys on the next episode of Nerd Mythology as we dive more into the pages of Hal Jordan and this new universe that I've now <laughs> been exposed to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get yeah. ready. Get ready. <laughs> All right, guys. Catch Peace. you on the next one. Peace.